um one uh some of uh some of the conditions that you mentioned here like the the way the indian media works the way it's structured the influence of big business has not necessarily changed between this um past 10 year period and the period before and and the other thing i just want to flag for for listeners is that um when people who who haven't uh, seen indian media think about government mouthpieces essentially they think of very boring straightforward um attempts to just you know republish whatever the government is saying and and i think what 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 i'd like to impress upon them and maybe like you can do it well because you you have to pay attention to these folks all the time is is how almost competitive they are in proving themselves this is a free market tacked on to some odd uh, you know level of of pro government propaganda yeah i think there's often like we joke that they do um, I, i think even the bjp spokespersons are sometimes stunned at what the anchors are saying because i think even they can't fathom this kind of stuff that can you know sometimes be said so yeah it's it's not just boring doordarshan you know the state public tv that we have that kind of propaganda it's really like i said i mean if uh, there's the the whole thing of you know modi calling putin and uh stopping the war uh you know russia ukraine war uh to get indian students out now this was denied by the ministry of external affairs this didn't not happen but you had hours and hours of programming talking about how modi is great his one phone phone call with putin fixed this and the world is listening to him joe biden is calling him for advice it's really really um it's i mean at one level it's it's fantastical i mean the kind of things that can be spun around modi but but if you look at you know the result of it you have if you you know just we are in the middle of an election cycle if you actually go out and speak to people who are consuming this one of the big reasons why people vote for modi is because they feel he stopped the war they actually feel that india is powerful enough today under modi to stop wars that no one paid heed to us 10 years ago and today we have a prime minister who can show the world you know where we are and what we can do that's a huge part of why a lot of people say that they want to vote for modi even if there's unemployment or their own circumstances may not be well off you know they they say that at least the country is going in a direction which is great under this leader uh and when it comes to vilification of opposition now it's i i, I don't think there's been many pieces written on how weak the opposition is in fact you've had pieces talking about uh why one of the reasons why modi is where he is is because the opposition hasn't been able to get its act together so i understand criticizing the opposition but these anchors would go to the extent of you know uh calling them anti national or that they are you know they are being paid by pakistan or sometimes even just you know you have like anchors straight up calling them stupid you know like there there are shows that call rahul gandhi an idiot or stupid or you know with hashtags like rahul is strange i mean that's what we're talking about so yeah the political scientist asim ali um uh, we we last week um, we in our recommendations column i i brought i mentioned one of the things that came out of news laundry and analysis that you guys did on on what shows up um in the evening shows um and how much of, of it is opposition bashing and how little of it is on substantive issues um and and the, polit- the the political scientist asim ali has has made the argument that the reason why some of some folks are are so surprised at how harsh modi stone has been in the last few weeks um regarding muslims and so on is because he's broadly outsourced the job of doing the the dog whistling to the media and only now has to jump in the fray during elections absolutely i mean through times like corona to give you an example after 2019 where we were struggling with a very sudden lockdown you had images of migrants walking back home to their villages you had uh, you know reports after report about uh, you know shortages shortage of oxygen um real time of uncertainty you had a lot of anchors dedicated sizable amount of time on muslims and how they have brought corona to india uh you've had and this whole in fact i think in the run up to elections it's been a little less the anti muslim dog whistling on television news but if you look at i mean i can't remember of the past 2 years a single day where i haven't seen a news anchor talk about some or the other form of jihad that muslims are inflicting on hindus 
this is love jihad where apparently you know muslim men are out to lure majority hindi hindu women and convert them uh, land jihad that they're up to grab your land uh, jobs jihad that they're out to take your you know jobs uh, spit jihad this odious this is happening on television news by the way where anchors comes and tell you that you know um this was a show that a hindi news channel had done uh, which said that uh, muslims are spitting into your food you know it's called spit jihad so i mean everything from you know who they love to how they pray to what they eat to the jobs that they aspire to is under suspicion and it's really really odious i mean and it's relentless every day there's something or the other which is anti muslim i think in fact in the run up to elections is become less but last two years i don't remember watching a single uh, i don't remember a single day actually without you know running into some of the other anti muslim propaganda on television news channels and you have bjp spokespersons on that who would side with the you know so even if it's not mr modi saying things it's the bjp spokesperson will pretty much come on board and you know 